Hello everybody and welcome to this month's edition of Strengthen Your Memory. My name is Beth Grigg. I'm the Director of Residential Health Services at Windermere and I'm glad to have you join us. Every month we're going to focus on a different topic that relates to your memory and my goal is to give you tips and tricks of easy, fun things that you can do to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to strengthen your memory and to keep your thinking sharp. Today's month's focus is going to be on board games. So you might be asking, how can board games boost your memory and general cognition? Um, what I like to do at the beginning of each of our sessions is to give you just a little bit of background information to help you understand how your brain works and how some of these tips and tricks will impact your memory and your thinking. I just received the latest copy of Reader's Digest and there was an interesting article in there about genius brain habits. I'm going to read to you from the article. Whether you're deliberating a chess move or bluffing at cards, you're also giving the frontal lobe, which is the area of your brain that handles executive function, a workout. The frontal lobe is particularly vulnerable to the effects of aging. According to a 2014 University of Wisconsin study, older adults who routinely worked on puzzles and played board games had higher brain volume in the area responsible for cognitive functions, including memory, than those who didn't play games. So pretty powerful stuff. This is a picture of your brain, of course, the frontal lobe that they were talking about, um, that I was talking about in the previous slide. The frontal lobe is the one that's in blue. Um, Some are kind of buried in the middle of your brain. There's an area that's called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is primarily responsible for your memory. Um, they call it the memory gatekeeper because all memories come through the hippocampus. And the hippocampus kind of decides where that memory is going to be put. If it's going to be lodged in your memory banks in your brain or if it's just going to go sailing right back out of your brain again um, with no memory retention whatsoever. So scientists used to think that that area of the brain was the only part of the brain that was responsible for memory. But as time has gone on, they found that that's not actually the case, that many of the other parts of your brain are also related to memory, and that if you can strengthen um, each of the different areas of the brain, you can in turn strengthen your memory as a whole. They found that you can build new brain that you know, they've done tests that if you were to weigh a brain before and after doing a strenuous you know, thinking exercise, your brain actually gets heavier. You improve your blood flow, you build more neural pathways. So there are a lot of things that you can do with brain exercises to strengthen your mind. What I'm going to show you on the next few slides is you know, all the different areas of your brain that you use when you play board games and how that can directly impact your thinking and your memory. So the yellow arrow is pointing to the frontal lobe. And again, that's what we talked about before. The frontal lobe is responsible for executive function and very high level thinking. It's also um, responsible for organizing, problem solving, attention, and memory. So when you think about it, when you're playing board games, you're using a lot of those skills. You're exercising the brain in all those different ways and it's going to directly impact your memory. The temporal lobe it has to do with auditory or your hearing function, speech, and also long-term memory. So think about when you're playing a board game, you're listening, you're talking. Sometimes the game actually is tapping into your long-term memory. So the more you exercise that lobe, the stronger your thinking process is going to be. The parietal lobe deals with sensory, I'm sorry, sensory function and the sense of touch. It deals with spatial sense and navigation, and scientists are starting to think that there's also a component of memory retention in that area of the brain as well. And then you have your occipital lobe, which deals primarily with visual function. You know, and of course, as you're playing board games, you are using uh, many of your senses, including your sense of vision. And then there's the cerebellum that has to do mostly with balance and motor control, but it also is responsible for some tasks relating to attention and language and emotions and memory. So as you can see, every area of the brain you know, really is engaged when you are doing 
uh, games like board games and other kinds of puzzles. The more you exercise all the areas of your brain, the stronger your brain is going to be, the more memory retention hopefully you'll have. So to wrap up uh, this part of the discussion, exercises, you know, when you're doing board games, it can exercise your long and short term memory recall. It can increase your cognition through spatial reasoning, judgment skills, logic, vocabulary recall. It promotes sociability, which we'll talk about later on in the program. But being with other people is one of the strongest things that you can do for your cognition and your memory. And playing board games, of course, gives you that opportunity to do so. And it provides enjoyment. And you might say, well, what does enjoyment have to do with my brain? Well, kind of, again, talking a little bit scientifically, when your body is under stress, when your mind is under stress, your body releases a stress hormone that's called cortisol. Cortisol, unfortunately, is toxic to the hippocampus section of your brain. And as you remember from earlier in this presentation, the hippocampus is you know, very responsible for your memory and where those memories are going to be placed and deposited. So if you have excess levels of cortisol, if your body is overly stressed, your hippocampus isn't going to work as well as it should. So we're going to talk to you about ways to find some relaxation, to laugh, to enjoy life. And when you can do that, then they've shown that your cortisol stress hormone levels decrease and your memory can actually be positively impacted in that situation. So what we're going to do for the rest of this class is I'm going to talk you through some common board games, give you some different twists and ways that you can make the board game workable if you're playing by yourself and if you're playing with other people. Um, you can easily find all of these board games in big stores like Target or Walmart. If you go online, you can easily find any of these games on uh, different sites like Amazon. Or a lot of times if you're online, you can find these games, actual online versions of these games to play. So as we go, I'll give you direct instructions for each one. Uh, for this presentation, I recommend that you get a pencil, some scrap paper, and just know that there's going to be times that I periodically suggest that you put your presentation on pause so you can work out some of the puzzles on your own. Um, and that'll just give you a little bit more fun. You can actually play along with us during this presentation. So the first game that I'm going to talk about is a game called Tri Bond. There's a regular version, there's a kid's version. Uh, the, the game comes with a pack of cards and it also comes with a game board, which you can use, but sometimes I find the cards by themselves um, are just as much fun. Um, and the cards give you the opportunity to play on your own. If you don't have anybody with you at the time, you can play independently. So on each card, they give you a puzzle to solve. They give you three words. And what you have to do is to figure out what the three words have in common. So for example, I'm going to show you um, an example for you to try out on your own. So you're going to try to figure out what the three following words have in common book, cell, number. So if you think about what word all three of those have in common, the answer is phone. Because you would, could say there's a phone book, a cell phone, and a phone number. Okay? So now that you understand how to play, what we're going to do is for each of the following slides, I'm going to say the three words out. You can put the screen on pause while you try to figure out the answer. Um, and then I will give you the answer um, at the end of the slide. Here we go. Head, marching, aid. If you want to put your uh, screen on pause for a second to solve them, then go ahead and hit play when you're ready. So now that you're back with me, I hope that you were able to figure out the answer. And the answer to this slide would be band. You'd have a headband, a marching band, and a band aid. So some of these can be pretty easy. You might find that some of the other cards can be a little bit more difficult. There are times that you might need to stare at one of the cards for quite a while to figure out what the answer is. But it's okay. You're really working out your brain in those situations. 
So here's another one to try. Again, I'm going to read the three clues. You can go ahead and put your uh, the presentation on pause while you solve it, and when you're ready to continue, just hit play again. The three words are sauce, seed, and core. Go ahead and hit pause. And now that you're back, I'm going to go ahead and read the answers. The answers to sauce, seed, and core, the answer is apple. You would have applesauce, apple seed, and apple core. Here's another one. The three words are town, work, base. So go ahead and put it on pause while you work out the answer and hit play when you're ready. So now that you're ready, the answer to the puzzle for town, work, and base is home. Hometown, homework, and home base. You're doing great. Here's another one. Chocolate made carton. Go ahead and put it on pause until you're ready to hit play again. Now that you're back, the answer to chocolate made and carton is milk. Chocolate milk, milk made, milk carton. Here's another. Business playing index. Go ahead and put it on pause until you figured it out. Now that you're back, the answer to business, playing, and index is cards. Business cards, playing cards, and index cards. And one more I have for you here. The questions are pig, light, fountain. Go ahead and put it on pause until you know the answer and then you can hit play again. Now that you're back, the answer for pig, light, and fountain is pen. Pig pen, pen light, fountain pen. So with Tribond that we just played and with Scattergories that we're going to play, um, it's important to know that both games you can play on your own. With Tribond, you can simply look at the three words that they give you on the front of the card of the box of cards in, in the Tribond board game and try to solve them yourself. And then when you figured out the answers or if you get stuck, you just flip over the card and the answers are on the other side. There are different categories. Some are harder than others. Some really might make you think. Some you can work on with other people and try to solve together. And other times you can compete against somebody else to try to see if you can come up with the, the answer before your opponent can. So any time that you can bring somebody else in to play with you, it really is going to benefit you in the long run with that extra social ability factor. However, it's okay to play it on your own too. If you happen to be alone and you have some free time, go ahead and play Tribond and some of these other games on your own. Scattergories is another game that you can play by yourself or with somebody else. And Scattergories is another game that you can buy online in stores or you can actually play the game online as well. So what happens with Scattergories is there's going to be a different letter for each puzzle. Maybe it'll be A, maybe it will be J, maybe it will be W. Um, and for every time you play this, you can use a different letter and you'll be able to use the same puzzles over and over and over again. So for each card, your scorecard, you're going to have three or five different categories. And what your goal is, is to try to see if you can think of a word in each category that starts with the particular letter that you've chosen. The first example I'm going to give you is um, the puzzle that you're going to be using the letter B for. So here's an example for you. I have the letter B, so I know that all of my puzzles, all of my answers need to start with the letter B. Here are my categories, colors, countries, dog breeds, fruits and vegetables, things associated with South America. So what I would do is I'd say, okay, well, what's a color that begins with the letter B? Maybe blue, maybe brown, maybe beige. Countries, you could do Brazil, 
you could do Bolivia. A dog breeds, maybe Basset Hound, um, fruits and vegetables, broccoli, bananas, things associated with South America, maybe Brazil. So you can write them down. Um, you can play in a few different ways. If you're playing by yourself, you can either give yourself a time limit. Maybe you can tell yourself, I want to try to get an answer to each one of these questions in 30 seconds and challenge yourself that way. Maybe you want to try to see if you can get five answers for each category. Um, there are different things that you can do to play it on your own to make it exciting and to exercise your brain in different ways every time you play it. If you do happen to have somebody with you, what you can do is to compete against each other to see who can come up with the most creative answers. So what that means is, say under colors, if both of you write down blue, you actually would even out um, because you both picked the same one. But say one of you picked beige and three other people that you're playing with picked blue, you would get an extra point because you picked the one that nobody else has picked. And that creativity and that problem solving and executive function, that is really a powerful tool to exercise your brain. Plus, it makes it fun when you're competing against somebody else. Um, and, you know, again, that really benefits you with the socialization part. So we're going to do this again now. I'm going to give you a different letter, different categories. And again, I'll tell you when you can pause your screen. And when you resume, you're going to hear me talking again about um, what the next steps are going to be. So for this puzzle, I want you to try this. You're going to be doing things with the letter D. And here are the categories that you're going to try to find words that begin with the letter D that fit these categories. Number one, math terms. Number two, authors. Number three, cartoon characters. Number four, types of furniture. Number five, terrifying things. So again, what you're going to do is to try to come up with at least one word for each of these categories that begin with the letter D. Go ahead and take as much time as you want. You can put me on pause, and when you hit play again, you're going to hear me giving you the next steps. So welcome back. I hope you had fun finding answers to all of these categories. Um, don't forget there are different ways that you can play. You can try to find these answers very quickly, or you can challenge yourself and say, with this one, I want to try to find five different answers for each of the categories. But I hope you're having fun with this puzzle. I'm going to have you try this one again. This one's going to give you the letter R. And this time you're going to have five different categories. You need to try to find a word that begins with the letter R that matches each of these categories. Number one, things that smell bad. Number two, actresses. Number three, diseases. Number four, things that are good for you but you don't like. Number five, cities. Again, go ahead and put your presentation on pause by hitting the pause button. And when you finish the puzzle, you can hit play again. And then you'll hear me resuming the presentation. Welcome back. I hope that you had a good time finding all of the words that begin with the letter R that fit each of these categories. So that game is one that's easy to take along with you. You can even just keep a list of categories in your purse or in your wallet or on your phone and say you're waiting at the doctor's office or you're waiting at a restaurant or you're spending time with family. You can just pull out that list, pick a letter, and just start naming off the answers to all the different categories. I'm going to talk now about a different game that a lot of people have played before. It's called Pictionary. And the act of thinking about how to draw a picture, envisioning a picture in your mind, actually being able to translate that to what your hand is doing, and creating a picture on a paper that somebody else can actually understand what it is a picture of, is a really powerful brain exercise. So there are ways that you can play Pictionary on your own, or even better, if you have a friend around or family members that you can play with them, that is great. So basically, all you do with Pictionary is they're going to give you a word, and you have to draw a picture of that word. 
in such a way that maybe somebody else would be able to tell what that is a picture of. So in the next uh, slide, I'm going to give you four words and I want you to put the presentation on pause while you try to draw those words out and then go ahead and press play after you're finished drawing those words. Here we go. The four words for you to try to draw are moon, window, kite, wheel. Go ahead and put this on pause and then press play when you're ready to resume. Okay, so you're back. I hope you had fun drawing those four words. You might say, well, those words are kind of easy. So the next slide that I'm going to do is going to give you uh, words that are a little bit more challenging. Let's see how you do with these. Turtle, castle, fireplace, palm tree. You're going to try to draw these words in such a way that somebody else would be able to tell what they are. You can go ahead and put this on pause right now while you draw. And when you're finished and you're ready to continue, just press play again. Hello, it's good to have you back. How did these words go for you? Were you able to draw them pretty easily or was it getting a little bit more difficult? Here are your last four ones that I'm going to have you try. And you'll find when you play Pictionary, if you get the board game, there's a box of cards with hundreds of different um, clues, different puzzles that they, they, they want you to try to draw. Some of them are easy. A lot of them are nouns like elephant, honeybee, volcano, but some are a little bit more difficult. They might ask you to draw walking or jumping or blue or red. Think about how you would be able to draw those things without using words or numbers as a prompt. So in this one, wind might be a little bit more difficult for you to draw. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go ahead and put this on pause and then draw away. When you're ready to continue, just press play. How did that go for you? I hope you enjoyed that game. The last game we're going to talk about is a game called Outburst. And we're going to change this one a little bit. Um, the game itself comes with some rules. So if you buy the board game, um, you can go ahead and follow the rules on that board game. And I think you'd find it to be a lot of fun. But the good thing about board games is you can really change them to do whatever it is that you want them to do. So I'm going to encourage you to play this game in a little bit of a different way, and I'll explain how. What you're going to do is you're going to get a category, and then I'm going to ask you when you get that category to put this presentation on pause and write as many answers as you possibly can for each of the prompts and see if you can guess as many as you can. Try to see if you can guess 10. If that's going to be your goal, see if you can guess all 10 items. You might find more than 10, but sometimes you might really struggle to get to 10. Um, so let's give you an example to get you started on knowing how to play this game. For example, if the category is cereals, um, then you, what you would do, and I'd say to myself, I want to try to get 10 answers for each of the following categories. So I need to think of 10 cereals. So I might write, Raisin Bran, Rice Krispies, Special K, Cheerios, and I'd keep going until I got to 10. If I really felt like doing more, of course, I could do more. So I'm going to have you try some of these out yourself. So for this one, I want you to see if you can write down at least 10 words that rhyme with bet, B-E-T. So again, you can put this on pause when you're ready, and then when you're ready to continue, just hit play again. So were you able to find at least 10 words that rhyme with bet, B-E-T? I hope you had a good time with that. I'm going to give you another one to try. This one might be a little bit harder. This time I want you to write at least 10 letters, I'm sorry, at least 10 words that are three letters in length, beginning with the letter S. For example, sun, S-U-N. Okay, I want to see if you can find 10 words that are three letters beginning with the letter S. Go ahead and put this on pause, and when you're ready to resume, go ahead and hit play again. Okay, did you have a good time with that one? I hope you did. I'm going to give you another one. 
This one is going to test some of your short-term memory. Some of the other questions tested your long-term and really worked out areas of your brain. Um, to find more vocabulary words, this one's going to test you on recent events. I want you to try to write down the name of the wait staff in the dining room and the bistro. Write down as many names as you can. Can you get to 10? I'm going to challenge you to do that. Go ahead and put this on pause. Work out your problem. And work out your puzzle and then when you're ready go ahead and hit play again. So was that one easier or was that one harder than some other ones? I challenge you too if you don't know the names of 10 wait staff in the dining room or the bistro go ahead and get to know them. Ask them their names. Tell them you're playing a game and you needed to have their name for that. Um, you will find that socialization is really exciting and they might want to hear about the games that you've been playing. They might want to play along with you. So the last one that we're going to do in this category are ways to strengthen your memory. So this kind of ties into everything that we've been talking about today. So I'm going to challenge you to come up with at least 10 ways to strengthen your memory. And when you're ready to resume after you put yourself on pause, go ahead and hit play again. And then you can hear um, some of the things that I'm going to suggest to you of ways to strengthen your memory. So welcome back. Were you able to write some things down? I hope that one of the things you wrote down was, was playing board games as a way to strengthen your memory. Maybe you remember some of the other things that we talked about during the class. But every time we have our memory class together, I'm going to tell you at the end of the class the three ways to best strengthen your memory. And this has been proven over and over and over again by scientists. Um, and there are three uh, things that everybody can do. The first thing is to make sure that you are uh, getting physical activity and taking care of your physical needs. So um, exercise, resistance, strength training, endurance training, cardiac um, exercise, that's all very important to strengthen your memory and strengthen your thinking. But also in this category you're looking at good nutrition, a well-balanced diet, making sure that you're getting enough sleep, making sure that you're getting enough fluid, that you're not getting dehydrated. So that's number one, physical activity. Number two, most important way to strengthen your memory, is cognitive activity. So that's where you're looking at board games and puzzles, conversations, debates, lectures, reading books, reading magazines, de debating current events, reading newspapers. All that comes under cognitive activity. And the third best way to strengthen your memory is being around other people. Socialization. A lot of people don't realize the important part that socialization plays with um, making sure that you're having as strong a memory as you possibly can. So just to reinforce the three main ways to strengthen your memory. Number one, physical activity. Number two, cognitive and brain exercise. And number three, socialization. Thank you very much for attending this presentation. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, my name is Beth Gregg. I'm the director of Windermere Residential Health Services in Wheaton, Illinois. My phone number, if you'd like to contact me, is 630-681-4037. Or you can reach me online at Grig, G R I G G, Beth, B E T H, at WindermereLCS.com. Stay tuned for our, our next episode next month where we'll be talking about brain aerobics. Thank you for joining us.